All right, welcome back guys. It is time to do some testing with my new Palmetto State Armory 16 inch 556 upper. Got this guy a pretty good deal on uh, one of their Black Friday sales. And uh, it is what I expected. It's got their uh, free, uh, free float rail. I think that's a 13 and a half inch uh, rail. 16 inch barrel, of course, mid-length gas system. The handguard seems nice. All the other parts seem, you know, what you would expect. This is their stainless steel one in seven twist uh, freedom stainless barrel. So that's what we're working with. I have already put some rounds through this upper. Uh, video I did a few days back about my Vortex scope that came back from repair. I used this upper to, uh, to test out the scope and it ran okay. We put uh, 30 or 40 rounds through it and didn't have any issues whatsoever. So this did not come with a, with a BCG and charging handle. So we'll be stealing one of the ones from my, uh, from one of my 300 blackouts to test with. But the plan for today is to put a bunch of rounds through this guy and just get a sense of what sort of accuracy, accuracy potential it's got. Because here's the thing. Before I found this on sale and decided to get it, I had actually ordered a barrel. This is a uh, AR Stoner 1 in 7, 16 inch, 5.56 five, barrel. So if this barrel doesn't get the job done, we've got this barrel to test with as well. So that's possibly where this could be going. You know, it, hopefully this thing shoots great and this I can, you know, put it in another gun. But if this doesn't shoot as well as we'd like, then we've got options. I also have not torn this down to, uh, you know, check the, uh, check the torque on the barrel nut or uh, square up the, the face of the receiver. I haven't done anything. So it is just like it was whenever I took it out of the package. So that's what we're going to test with first. So I guess that's probably the progression. We'll see how it shoots this way. Hopefully it shoots great. If it doesn't, I'll tear it apart, square up the, the receiver face, put it back together, and then we'll try it again. And if that still doesn't do it, then we'll uh, try the other barrel in it. So that's where this possibly could be going. I have pulled out an assortment of bullets that I want to use in today's video. This might be a long freaking video. We are going to shoot all sorts of stuff. I tried to cover the whole weight range here. So I'll start with the, with the lightest and we'll move up. These are actually Hornady 55 grain, you know, full metal jackets with, uh, with a candle lure. These, they aren't a midway box. It's their, just their bulk packaging. I bought a, a box of 500 a long time ago, and this is the, uh, the box they come in, but this is the, uh, the Hornady 55 grain full metal jacket. This is of course in their load manual, you know, or in their manual, they've got load data for this bullet. So we are going to shoot CFE 223 with this bullet. We're going to shoot from 25 up to 27 grains in high, half, uh, half grain increments. So 25, 25 and a half, all the way up to 27. So that is going to be our first bullet. Second bullet is going to be the 62 grain. SS109, XM855, whatever, you know, bullet. So these recently did a video on these and they shot pretty bad. So I don't have, uh, I don't have very high hopes for this, but we'll see how they shoot. So that'll be 62 grains. Now Western powders, which is ram shot and accurate, their load guide has got load data for these bullets. So we are going to shoot ramshot tack with this. We're going to shoot 23 grains up to 25 grains, 23 up to 25. 
And for all of these, I, I got, uh, you know, load, load data directly from a manual and we're gonna go by the uh, suggested overall length in the manuals, unless we run into the issues, which I can't imagine we would. So for overall length back here, the 55 grainer was a 2.2 inch. This one's gonna be 2.260. The next bullet is a Hornady 68 grain. Boat tail hollow point. There's 68 grain match bullet. It's a pretty darn nice bullet. Grab some load data out of their manual for this guy for AR comp. So 2.250 overall length. We're gonna shoot AR comp from 21 grains up to 23 grains. So there's that guy. Next is the uh, 69 grain Sierra Match King. This is my favorite bullet. I love this bullet. I expect this guy to, uh, to shoot some pretty good groups. And out of the Sierra manual, we are going to shoot Varget at 2.260 overall length. We're gonna shoot from 24 grains up to 26 grains with Varget. And last but not least is the 77 grain Sierra Match King. I haven't shot a lot of these bullets. I've had this, uh, they come in these itty bitty little 50 round boxes. I've just never shot a lot of them. They're very expensive and I've just never really had the need, I guess, but got some here. We are going to shoot these also 2.260 overall length. We're going to use uh, Vitivori N140. We're going to shoot from 22.5 grains up to 24.5 grains. So some Vitivori N140 for the uh, 77 grain Sierra Match Kings. The other thing I want to shoot is this. I've got 10 rounds of this Norma, of this Norma Match uh, ammo. These are also 77 grain Sierra Match Kings. So we'll see how these shoot when compared to our hand loads. I mainly wanna shoot these because I want this brass. I've had this box of ammo sitting around for a long time. I need to go ahead and shoot it up and what better time than now. So I think that'll be a pretty good test for our upper. Should, uh, you know, should give us some some good idea of what sort of accuracy potential we're looking at with this barrel. So that is the plan. Brass. We are going to use Federal 223 brass, some FC 223 brass. Got a bunch of this stuff. So I uh, went ahead and prepped it a few days ago. This has been resized, trimmed, and completely prepped. So this is ready for powder and bullet. I did go ahead and uh, prime them. And today's primer is gonna be the good old uh, CCI number 41, 5.56 five, primers. So that is it. I've got a whole lot of charges to weigh. So that ends up being, let's see, five, that's 125, Hand loads, yeah, we ought to be able to find a, uh, we ought to be able to find some good shooters in there, I would think. So let me get resituated. We'll start from the smallest and work our way up. So we'll start with the 55 grainer and CFE 223. All right, so this has taken forever, hours. 125 hand weighed charges using five different powders. <sighs> it's been a slow process. Figured I would just skip over the loading here for the most part in this video since we're gonna be on the range so long and 
all of that stuff so try to keep the length of this video in check nothing surprising all the loading has gone as expected no problems at all and that is finally the last round all right so we've got Hundred and twenty five test rounds and then twenty five ciders. So let's get out to the range and see if any of them will shoot. You know what? I think I'm gonna change the plan here. So welcome to the range. I've already shot seventy five shots. I shot our fifty five grain hornady. Full metal jackets. I shot our 62 grain full metal jackets and I shot the 68 grain Hornady match bullets. It's 15 degrees out here and I underestimated how much that was going to affect my target camera battery. So <laughs> the 55s and the 62s shot awful. Like the target is a mess. I'll show you the target. The 68s shot better, but that was when my freaking uh, target camera died so you know what i'm just going to start right here we've got the 69 grain sierra match king and the 77 grain sierra match king to shoot and I'll, I'll bring you along as i shoot these and then once we get back to the bench i'll show you the groups from the 55s and the 62s and the 68s you didn't miss much it was not good it was not good at all the 68s were okay but the the 55s and 62s were not so yeah, that's the plan. We've got uh, 50 rounds here to shoot, plus the Nosler uh, factory ammo with the 77 grain Sierra Match Kings. So let me get situated here, and that's where we'll start. We'll just start here with the 69 grainers. It's better this way anyway, right? You didn't want to watch me shoot all those crappy groups anyway. So with the 69 grain Match King, we are shooting Varget, and our first load is 24 grains. So let's get to it. Okay, not a terrible start when compared to the to the other bullets. Okay, 24.5 grains. Twenty five grains. These groups aren't bad, but they're nothing great. Hmm. Maybe it'll tighten up here on the top end. Okay, 25.5 grains.
or maybe not. I'll tell you what, I better bring uh, bring the scope to the left about yeah two MOA. That way we'll make sure to get all these shots on paper. Okay, 26 grains. Okay, I guess I brought the scope too far. Yeah, I had a failure to feed there, but I think that was the, uh, the ammo. Whenever I was putting them in the magazine, I was having a lot of trouble with the nose uh, dragging the front of the magazine. At least I think that was a, yeah. Yeah, it didn't feed because like, well, there's, there's an example. If you can see that, which you probably can't, but uh, the nose of the bullets just aren't really fitting in the magazine. I guess this this is a compressed load, so I guess my overall length grew a little bit, and I didn't realize it whenever I was loading them. So I'm not going to blame the upper for that one. All right, I better come back to the right. At least a minute. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, moving on to the 77 grain Match Kings with uh, Vitivori N140. This is 22.5 grains. Okay, 23 grains. Okay, 23.5. Okay, 24 grains. All right, 24.5, and I had a lot of trouble getting these guys to go into the magazine. So we may have another failure to feed. Okay, 10 rounds of Norma with the 77 grain. Match Kings, just gonna shoot them all into one group. Let's see what they do.
Okay, for crying out loud, let's get in the warm, see what we can make of all this. All right, so I've thawed myself out, and it's time to see what we can make of all this. First of all, I am happy with the function of the upper, the, uh, the feeding issue I had, and actually I had one that I didn't show you guys that was in the, uh, in the earlier rounds I had shot, were totally not the upper's fault, it was the ammo. I had just gone a little bit too long on overall length there. So, the gun, uh, you know, the, the upper ran great. It ran really well. So, no complaints there. Let's start looking at some groups. And we will start with the lighter bullets. I've tried to circle things to make this a little bit less confusing. Group sizes are in green here. So our first bullet was the 55 grain Hornady full metal jacket boat tail and three inch groups. So our best group was 2.2, the worst was 3.2. So it was consistent, I guess. It was co consistently crappy, uh, right around that two and a half to three inch uh, range. So nothing to get excited about there. I did get velocity information for all of these, but none of it's really all that interesting. What I've added here, I did put the highest velocity we achieved over here in blue on all the targets. So got up to 2,812 feet per second there. You can see right about 2,800 on the next bullet and 2,800 with the 68, but. All right, the next one, this is where things kind of got a little bit uh, funky. The 62 grain SS109, this bullet's just crap. You know, I think that's just all there is to it. Our best group was 3.9 inches, and actually three of the groups were 3.9 inches, and the worst was 4.8 4 inches, which threw this one way out here. So, yeah, SS109 was terrible, but it was terrible in my Colt. It was terrible in my nephew's uh, Palmetto. So, yeah, I think that bullet's just crap. The next was the... Uh, 68 grain Hornady hollow point boat tail with AR comp. Now things started to get a little bit better. Our best group, which was, this was actually the best group of the day, was a one incher there at 22 grains. But we went from one inch, the worst was 2.7. Once we started getting higher charges, the groups really seemed to, uh, to open up a bit, but these lower charges weren't bad, a 1.6, a 2.4, and a 1.0. Not bad. So, you know, you guys didn't miss much here. Just spraying bullets all over the place was really all I was doing here in these first 75 rounds. Okay. Now, on to the ones you guys saw. The, uh, with the 69 grain Sierra Match King, we got up to 2,780 feet per second. The 77 grain Match King got to 2,529. And the factory Norma ammo was 2,478. Nothing terribly interesting there. Pretty decent consistency here. So the 69 grain, our, our best group was an inch and a half. And our worst group was 2.6 inches, the, the red guys here. So... Not good, not awful, but not that great. You know, just, just kind of okay. You know, and, and very few of these groups looked like, it's not like we had like three tight shots and then a couple flyers. This was just kind of, just general inaccuracy, just kind of crappiness. And that's kind of what I've seen with my nephew's gun, who, which same barrel, uh, different rail, but same barrel, basically the same gun. This is about how his gun shot. So I'm not surprised by any of this, but then again, you know, I'm not super excited either. 77 grains, the Sierra Match King. Best group was 1.4 inch and worst group was 2.8 inches. This one here that kind of weirdly had some horizontal stringing going on. Two inches more or less there with the 77 grainers and the same followed through there with the uh, with the Norma factory ammo was a 2.4 inch group. 
it did kind of seem like it was trying to group a little bit better, but a couple high ones there. So it seems like the 77s were probably our best shooter. I don't know if it, if the group sizes actually say that, but just kind of, you know, standing back and looking at the groups, they seem the best. But the 69 grainer shot, kind of okay, but yeah. So function, very happy groups, not so much. So I need this gun to shoot a little bit better, right? If I want to test bullets and do load workups here on the channel, I need a gun that'll shoot good groups. So this is not good enough. So the next step, we'll end this video here, call this part one. You know, this was the uh, factory configuration test, I guess. What I want to do now is tear this guy apart, use my uh, receiver square thingy. Got one of these guys that you put inside of the receiver and, and use some, uh, some compound there to uh, square up the face of the receiver. Maybe that'll help, probably not, but maybe. So I want to do that. And plus, you know, I think there, there might be value in just tearing it apart and putting it back together. Right? I don't trust factory ammunition. Why would I trust a factory built gun? I want to, you know, I want to put it together myself. It does seem to be, you know, put together halfway decent. The only thing that's uh, the weird is that the spacer. Eh, let's see if I can even get you a picture of that. The spacer. That's too dark. There, that's a little bit brighter. If you can see, the spacer between the uh, the flash hider and the barrel is crooked. You probably can't even see it, but it's crooked. It's not on there straight. So while I don't think that makes a bit of difference, if they didn't get that straight, what else didn't they get straight? So I just want to tear it apart, put it back together, and then we'll try it again. And so I'm out of a couple of the bullets, the 77 grain match Kings I'm out of the 68 grain Hornady's I could get more, but they're so close to the 69 grain, uh, Sierra match Kings that I'll just stick with the 69 grain match Kings. So we'll use that guy. The 69 grain match King is one of our test bullets and I've got enough of these, uh, 55 grain Hornady's to do some tests with. So maybe, maybe those two we will tear it apart, put it back together, test out those two bullets and see if there's any improvement. If that gives us no improvement, then we'll pull out the other barrel, the AR stoner barrel that I've got and try it. And if it still doesn't shoot, then I'll probably buy another barrel. I don't know. We'll see, but that's kind of the plan. That was it uh, for today. So I will see you guys next time.